What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space, and we're going to start a new series today in RimWorld, which for those of you who don't know, I've been running a series in Alpha 9, but this is Alpha 11 of a colony simulator by Tyler Sylvester. Top down, very similar aesthetic to something like Prison Architect, and currently one of my favourite games. So today, I haven't played Alpha 11 at all really, and today we're going to kick off with a new colony, and first selection we have is basically we get to pick between three AI. So we've got Cassandra Classic, who's kind of your standard, starts off easy, gets more difficult as you go. You've got Phoebe Chillax, which is sort of an easy one, um, likes to kind of take things really easy. And then you've got Randy Random, who literally does throw completely random events at you. And of the three, I'm, I definitely like the sort of the standard AI, but I like to play it relatively difficult. So you've got different challenge levels here, and basically this here is kind of, as it says, the way RimWorld is meant to be played. You do have this extreme version, but it, it gets really, really nasty. Um, so challenge is where we're going to kick off with, but I want to do something different with this colony. So here we just select a world. This, this kind of doesn't really make much difference, to be honest. You can see the old world left over from previous versions of my game. And as this me mentions, uh, errors are not important, but I am running with the EDB interface mod, which I'll talk a little bit about once we get started. But first thing we want to do is pick ourselves a spot to begin with. So we've got this big map here, and literally this is split up into individual tiles, and each tile will have a biome, range of temperatures, a growing period, types of stone available, that sort of thing. And what biome you pick does make a difference. So if we pick one by the sea, we will have a bit of sea in the map, that sort of idea. And what I fancy doing with this season, we did last season uh, in Alpha 9, we were up in the mountains, but it was nice and warm. It never got that cold, dropped a little bit below freezing in the winter, but wasn't a big deal. So I want to go somewhere cold this time. And I know that they've introduced this new ice sheet biome, which is as you can see, ridiculously cold. You can go right up to straight negative, even at the hottest time of the year. But I think that might be a bit much. I fancy something down, something down where it's nice and cold, but not so cold that you have to be worrying constantly about it. So, you know, somewhere where it gets nice and cold in the winter, but the summer's all right. That might even be well, May to August. We're quite limited with the growing period there as well. This is the sort of, sort of thing I'm looking for, and I quite want to be by the sea as well for some reason. That's minus four average temperatures, that's pretty cool. Does drop us to a June to July growing period, which is pretty, pretty strict. So I might go granite, limestone, and slates. That's a nice selection of, of different rocks. Average temperature is below zero. May to August growing period, we're by the sea. That is good for me. So we're going to kick off there, and the next thing we get to do is select the three colonists you start with, and the storyline is basically you were on a Rimworld ship, big colonizing ship that was going around colonizing worlds, but for some reason or another, something happened on that ship to cause it to explode, and your game begins with you are the three survivors of this. You come down in escape pods with limited supplies, and you've got to kick off from there. And we get to have a sort of some influence on what those three guys are like, but we can't pick their abilities. All we can do is kind of randomize in order to get one that fits a bit what we want. So here we've got traits down here and stuff like nervous mental break threshold plus 7%. That's obviously really bad for us. Brawler will mean can't really use any shooting weapons much, much better with melee weapons. And this chemical interest will mean, as you can see, likes chemical sources of enjoyment. So basically we'll go nuts for beer when we have some in the colony. Uh, so that's not a great character. And we've obviously we've got the three here we can go through. So what the first thing I'm gonna do is look and see if any of these are any use to us. And I would say actually, no, the initial role for all three of these is terrible. So we're going to go through, and we're going to look for someone who is incapable of none, and then has some beneficial traits down here, and potentially even some beneficial skills. And these little fire icons, as you can see, is a passion. It means that they learn that ability much quicker. So they, that can be very important. Uh, however, this is still not great. And what we're basically looking for to begin with, as I said, is someone who's firstly capable of doing a lot of stuff. So all these ones with the massive incapable lists is not great. But also someone that fits the sort of roles we want. So medicine is important to begin with. So is cooking. So is growing. So is researching. And so is like construction and mining. But some of this sort of shooting, melee, social, and this artistic and crafting, not so much. So here we've got a hardworking psychopath. Hard worker is great. Psychopath. Uh, hmm. That also feels no mood boost from socialising is kind of really tricky to deal with. So while all of the other parts of psychopathy is actually kind of a benefit, I still think we're going to, especially for a doctor, um, we're going to want someone who's a bit better than that. So we, let's just jump through these quickly. 
cold tolerant and a slow poke. So no, I don't want no slow pokes in my initial starting guys. Careful shooting psychopath, no. You get a lot of really, really random traits and a lot of the traits are negative rather than positive. So at the moment, I'm gonna be doing a lot of randomizing. All right, here we go, iron willed, so that's good for his mental break threshold, but then we've got depressive, which means he's permanently unhappy, which is not great, but hard working's pretty good. And then we've got medicine, research, social. So for the time being, let's keep hold of Yudai and have a look at snot face here and see if we get luckier rolls. Psychically dull. Um, that is actually really good, believe it or not. Um, and then sanguine is really good and cold tolerance is really good. So that's definitely keeping good passions for medicine and cooking all really good. So we'll keep AJ, although we will be renaming these people and see what we get for the last one. And then we might go back and tweak Yudai quickly to see whether or not we get something better. Volatile is, volatile depressive, that's really bad. So not an option there. Abrasive, abrasive is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the worst traits. It basically, as it says, it tends to rub people the wrong way. What this means is he makes everybody unhappy, not just himself. So that's not great. Uh, we don't mind, like, maybe incapable of scary. That's not too bad. A hard-working optimist, but a slow poke. So it doesn't move so quickly, but when he does get there, he works really hard, and he's really hard to break. Skills, not great. Incapable of scary. No. Talk a little bit less so I can get through this quickly, because obviously I'd like to explain what I'm doing, at the, but at the same time, talking about every last little trait will take a little while. So let's get through. Prostophobe. Come No. Come on, give me something good. Neurotic teetotaler. Now, neurotic can be bad, but it's also got this global work speed benefit, so I actually really like that. So we've got good growing and potential for good mining on Nevit. Here we've got medicine and cooking, which is good and social, so potentially our doctor slash cook to begin with there. And then we've got Yudai, who was shooting, crafting, research. I think we could still potentially get someone better in Yudai's position, but for the sake of saving some time, let's not do that. Let's just name them up. So first up, normally what I do with this series is I will randomly pick people who want to be in the colony. So you just leave a note in the comments saying, I want to be in the colony. And I will roll a dice and randomly pick people who want to be in to come and be one of the colonists. But to begin with, for this season, I'm actually going to pick a few people from the comments from previously that I kind of want to be in the colony this time around. So we're going to have Sean, Mr. Sean Chesley, because he is a legend constantly giving me really good advice. We're going to have Mr. DJ, because he is also a legend. Um, in fact, I'll put it like that. Uh, mostly from the perspective of he's one of the big mods in my stream. Really appreciate him doing all that work. And at the same time, if you guys don't know about my stream, Mondays and Fridays, 7 p.m. GMT, feel free to drop by playing Space Engineers, RimWorlds, all sorts. And now, finally, Stu B, because he's he's just a legend, to be honest. Now, the last thing I need to do is, normally you'd click start and generate the map, but I know from many, many attempts to record this that my recording software causes the game to crash at this point. So what I need to do is say goodbye, and I will see you as the colonists land. Hooray, we made it. No crash this time. So this will be, this is, first of all, let's, sorry, I'll unpause it a sec, see where our colonists are going to come down, and right there so there they are in their drop pods they haven't quite popped out yet but first we're going to have a look around and try and decide where we want to start the map for this time this the map our, our base basically where, where we feel going to be a good base location so i'm initially starting off looking around for these things steam geysers that will enable us to use geothermal power a little later down the line and it's really really effective so that's one thing i'm looking for and we've had a couple so far in fact there's a couple right where we've landed which is kind of beneficial like three almost and then, otherwise, there's one there, but that's not that exciting. Also, got vaguely keeping an eye out for where the ore is located, which is always in the rocks around the map. More geo down there. I am... Oh, and then these suspicious rooms. These can contain various things, but some of that can be nasty. So, I very much think, actually, we've dropped in a really good location. I'm going to look at having a base set up this sort of area on the basis that... We can actually use the sea to some extent as a defense. We can't build right up to the edge. I think we can only build up to about there. But what it does enable us to do is know that raids aren't going to come in off that side of the map. So it's going to be this area, I think, and that's helpful because we're right there anyway. So first thing to do, let's unforbid all the stuff that they're going to need. Where's our steel? Normally there's some steel around somewhere. I am probably being blind. But normally we get some steel to begin with. Maybe not. Maybe no steel this time, maybe it's just not come down yet. So here is our initial colonists, and we can set permissions on the food and the meds, and more importantly, we can get them some weaponry. So DJ not very good with guns, so maybe we can give 
DJ the Plasteel Knife, Stuby, well, even worse with guns, alright, ignore me. Uh, DJ, in fact, you can get the pistol. Stuby, grab the Plasteel Knife because you're even worse. And Sean, with the high shooting, can grab the rifle that we begin with. We got this silver, and aha, here's our steel. I was being blind, I suspected as much. So yes, and now we need to get, first things first, the absolute basics. So, furniture, we need some sleeping spots for them to sleep in overnight. I might as well just have these up by the mountain up here. We're going to need both a growing zone and a stockpile. So, I'm thinking base design-wise, especially with where these two geos are, we have like a central zone around here, and then we build the base around it in a square, almost fort-like, because in this edition, this version of RimWorld, there are sapper raids that we need to worry about. So I'm going to start off with a relatively small growing zone. 6x6 six six, looks decent enough, kind of halfway between the two geos. And in this, we're going to begin by growing berries, because berries can be eaten without a penalty for them being eaten raw. That's our growing zone. We're going to need a stockpile alongside it. So where does it finish? It had to be red, didn't it? The colour I struggle with. So we'll have a stockpile alongside it. That's going to be for everything but, in fact, we'll have corpses, but we don't want human-like corpses. We only want animal corpses so that we can butcher them for meat. Uh, and we don't want rotten stuff in there either, preferably. And next thing we need to think about, let's probably get those guys going on the hauling is right here we have our priority set up so this is where we can basically dictate what they're going to do and I like to have firefighting up nice and high patient up even higher this basically ensures that they will always go and fight fires unless they're injured in which case they'll go and get themselves treated and then doctor wise we Sean is actually the better doctor right this second but DJ with his high passion for doctoring might actually be the better person in the long run Stu B is pretty obvious. Stu is going to be growing things for us. Uh, and then if we have growing on three, let's have researching on three because there's a priority sideways as well as numbers. So this side is the most priority, as it says up here, highest priority up here, lowest priority down here. So we'll grow and then research in the current setup. Uh, and then hauling and cleaning are going to be important for him as well. And probably a bit of mining and a bit of plant cutting. Not going to want researching here. Not going to want crafting yet. That's something for later. Same with smithing and tailoring. This is all later down the line so repairing constructing and cooking are going to be the priorities right here and given that uh, we were going to have DJ as the doctor weren't we so we actually want to turn those down and we're going to have warden and then cooking so that sort of approach for DJ we can have warden off here and then that kind of leaves Sean as the person that's going to be doing the construction and repairing sort of works for us and then later on moving on to being a crafter and I don't think there's any problems really in having researching left on for Sean, just in case we get in a position where Stu is busy. Right, and that should mean that they all start getting about their tasks while we look at building our first structure. So we have loads and loads of wood on this map, like loads of wood, look at it all. So we're gonna start off with wood on the basis I'm probably gonna be like moving anything I build now, later down the line anyway. So. Very simple little building to start off with, just to house our colonists, just big enough for the beds and the door they need. Um, we probably want one extra room just on the basis that we might get a prisoner or another colonist come in reasonably quickly, reasonably early on. So let's prepare for that, get the beds down, and then these little rooms should be sorted. Obviously it's going to take them a little while to do that, but they're going to be cutting down plenty of wood while they do so, so might not even need to do any more about it. This is the adaptive tutor trying to tell us how to go about things. So we have a home area, as it's flashing here, and this basically tells them where to do things like put out fires and clean. So it's trying to tell me that I should set a suitable home area, which is probably correct. And then the next thing these guys are going to need, very important, is we're going to need to get power and research on the go. So this, we can't use it until we've researched something. So to begin with, we're going to have to rely on solar. But we're probably going to take the solar generators down eventually. In fact, I've got an idea. Let's get rid of these, because I believe you can now walk over these in this outfit. So I'm actually going to put these like kind of around the growing area on the basis that they'll probably just walk over the top of them. And the reason we want one of these is so we can have a battery to run all of our lights and our turrets and everything else at night as well. So next up, we want a little room for our research table, our cook, well, little room, this will be quite a long room on the basis that it's actually got to fit quite a bit in there and we'll have a door at either end for efficiency's sake. 
and the plan for in here is a research bench and as you as I said these things are quite large so let's get the research bench down and set our initial research so these are the things we can research and without a shadow of a doubt the first thing we want to be getting is geothermal power because we've got them right there it's quite hard to research it as far as this number represents how long it's going to take in units and there is some stuff that we can research much sooner than that but for our benefits in the position we're in with these two geothermals so close we'll make use of that and then the other thing we want in here is basically we're going to have people eating in here and this will also be where we do the cooking so I think if I put that there and no actually that's that's a bad spot for that put it one two further down where are we going to put the chef's table against this wall so that's absolutely fine a couple of stools for them to sit on uh, we're going to need our battery in here might as well have up this end sort of vaguely close and we're going to want a cook stove and a butcher's table not a steel butcher's table thank you very much a wooden butcher's table will just fine that looks just fine for now taking a little while to get that up and running of course Let's speed things up a little bit to help with that and we're also going to want to kind of set some wood chopping to be done around our base because we are going to run out of wood building all this I'm sure of that Fortunately, this map had absolutely tons of it. Look at it everywhere. Never played on the uh, Boreal Forest before, but I can see why it's called as such. Do kind of these are kind of interesting as well. All this marshland. I guess you can't build on it, so that's going to be a bit of a restriction later down the line for how big our base ends up being. Ah, yes. The other thing we've got is restrictions. So we have allowed areas which we should probably set up reasonably soon thanks to some of the new events but we also set how long people sleep and everything for and one thing i kind of think works quite well given that colonists will sleep during anything time if we have it all set to anything and then we just specify the work so we have them doing like a bulk patch of work like that hang on maybe that's perhaps a bit too long at once little patch of anything and then bit more work before they get a bit. That sort of idea. On that basis they'll choose when to sleep rather than sleep when I tell them to and I think that might end up being more efficient. I don't know. This is all experimentation. Obviously I've gone from Alpha 9 which was what the previous series was on straight into Alpha 11 because I didn't want to start playing Alpha 10 and confuse myself when I already had a series on the go. Now obviously I'm breaking that now a bit because I do still have the Alpha 9 series going because that base, that colony just doesn't seem willing to die anytime soon but that's fine uh, I, I think I can just about handle running the pair now I'm kind of so familiar with that particular version get some floors down inside there just so they feel a bit happy about these these are going to be not permanent but they're going to be around for a little while while we get everything set up and then we're going to worry to worry about security so we've not got much steel this is going to cost almost all of our remaining steel in one shot but we're going to for the time being we're going to have one of these turrets basically either side very straightforward and then we need to run some power conduits so that all of this is hooked together I do that in the most basic way we can and then how to run it round there I guess under the door round and then out the back a little bit like that and I guess just for the sake of making them a little bit happy I'll stick a light down in there as well there's a bed guys are you not not willing to use the beds yes basically all the while these outdoor sleeping spots exist they consider them their beds and so they won't move to these other beds until I get rid of these which I can now afford to do because we've got all of our beds up and running which is good they need to hurry up and finish this off let's have another just glimpse around the local environment see what we've got if anything's interesting around here there's a lot of these walls about that I'm gonna have to break down just for resources there's our third geothermal should we ever end up getting to the point where we need three and we've got plenty of steel up here which is fine we need to get rid of these mountains almost they're in the way of the base more steel have we got any gold or anything interesting some plast steel maybe to say it's not not looking much like it just a lot of compact steel about the place Maybe there'll be some inside one of these uh, little mountain things, but for the time being, it is looking pretty slim pickings when it comes to anything but compacted steel. Not the end of the world. There are other ways of getting what we need, but it would have been nice just to have a little gold seam like 
just there maybe <laughs> Now, it's complaining at me for needing a meal source, and that's because what you would normally do, honestly, is, or what is frequently what people do, is go for this nutrient resynthesis, which enables you to build a nutrient paste dispenser, which will convert pretty much anything into these, um, not these packaged survival meals, they are actually quite good, into these nutrient paste meals, which they don't much like eating. So what I tend to do is go straight for the approach where I get a cook's table up and I use berries to begin with because they don't get the negative for eating raw berries and then we expand that and get more food as we go down the line. Does look, however, like it is time to get some mining done too because we are definitely going to run out of steel building everything we've queued up there. So. Just a little bit of mining extra, because that's going to be quite a high priority task for them. Oh, right, okay then. We have been here for a while. Mr. DJ suggesting we give the colony a name, and you guys are going to tell me what that name should be. So I'm going to leave it as Ellis for the time being, because I can change the name later down the line. I can edit the save file and just switch that around. But yeah, hit me up in the comments. What should we What should we call our new town? Town by the sea. Oh, we got some, got some meals down here. That's not bad. Neat defences. Yes, I am on it. We are building the turrets, never fear. A bit more metal down here. We probably want to go and grab that. That's not too far from where we're located. Probably help out. And then, yeah, this is the sort of thing I was talking about breaking down. Because this is just all helpful resources, really. So we can, for the time being, claim this stuff. That basically makes it easier for us to break it down. It means it's our own ownership. It's owned by us. And then we will get around to breaking that down when we start needing a bit of stone. Come in handy. Stubby's on the researching. Not going that quickly, but don't actually think any of our guys is... Oh no, Stu is very talented at researching. Ignore me. We have a visitor. Now, there is a potential, if Busto is any good, that we want to capture Busto. Neurotic, psychically dull, trigger happy. That's actually not so bad, and the incapable of dumb labour really doesn't matter, so there's a potential we try and capture Busto here. He's only got a slate club. Uh, we might... We do have a spare bed that we could mark as prisoners. It's going to very much annoy wherever she's from. You're from Blackstalk Rigo. We don't even know. Learn history tab. Roger, let me just click on that to get rid of it. Look, here you go. You can see over time how our colony is gluing, doing. And you can select some graphs and things to see that our colonists are getting less happy over time. Whoever would have thought. Still bugging me about needing defences, but I'm sure they'll get onto that. So, the question is, do we want to try and beat up Busto? How is... I can't see the recruitment difficulty, can I? Is there any way to see? No, there's no way of seeing that how difficult she's going to be to recruit, unfortunately, which is kind of a pretty big factor in this. Some can have... you get a percentage of recruitment difficulty, and if it's 99, like often the tribes people are, which this female warrior quite clearly is then they can be really quite difficult to recruit so I think we might we might pass up on this first opportunity not really in a position don't really have the resources to be sorting that out quite yet so what we can do though is actually I don't, shouldn't be pausing it for this we can be setting up our cooking here so that we have meals being prepared so we're going to have 20 kicking around at any given time and we're also going to add butcher creature bill and this one's going to be do forever simply because we are only going to be hunting when we need meat basically so that won't be permanently active we have got is that, oh that's wood i thought that was a squirrel kicking around inside but no we're okay they are just about getting around to the defences, which is good, and some crashed cargo pods. Cool, what's this? Speaking of meat, there it is. And that's close to the base as well, isn't it? Yep, it's just above. Nice, so that does prompt me to think we now can be thinking about getting our fridge freezer set up on the go. So I did think about this a little bit when I was building this room, so it's actually going to come off the bottom here, and this will be where the, the corridor entering the, the freezer is. And as those guys have watched my previous series know, I do like to build... I do like to build the freezers with this little sort of isolating corridor on them because that tends to mean that you don't, yeah, I don't know, that they, they don't lose so much heat like this basically. And then they're actually going to use auto doors for this just on the basis that we want them to open and close as quickly as possible. Again, it maintains the heat in here and then we put a cooler on. So 
Yep, that way around looks good. Quite a large fridge to start off with, but I imagine this will be, again, all this sort of early setup will hang around for quite a while while we end up building and expanding the bigger bits. So that's probably all right for the time being. And of course, they're going to need to go and cut a whole bunch more trees in there, aren't they? Yep. Again, that's fine. We need the wood anyway, so going to help us out in the long run. Cool, and getting stuff done reasonably efficiently so far. A mad animal. Local squirrel has gone mad. Where are you? Broken up the top, and he wants to attack Sean. That's fine. We're just going to keep an eye on where Mr. Squirrel is, and then when he gets close, that's close enough. Our turrets do not currently have power because the battery isn't charging up quick enough, so you guys, all of whom are currently busy, I know, are going to come up here and get ready to deal with the squirrel. So DJ and Sean are the ones that are actually likely to do the dealing with, and Stuby is going to run interception. Oh, it's coming on this side I did not expect. And then get Stuby to go in with the melee. You two get out of there, please. Stu can do the killing with the knife, and then we've probably got some treatment needed. Bite scars, scratches, yeah, not so bad. Oh my word. Oh, DJ. Two cataracts, bad back, and you're frail. Oh, uh, that that's not information that's visible in the first screen, other than the fact that I should have probably noticed that you're, you're 61. So there was always going to be the odd issue there, but... But hey, uh, right, now we need a medical bed temporarily because these guys are going to need some treatment and make sure we've got Mr. DJ on the doctoring, which is fine. He didn't get injured either, did he? No, just horribly slow. Fortunately, some of that stuff can be sorted out with bionics. We're all right in that front, and you don't mind bionics. So that's all good. Speed things back up again. DJ, can you prioritize treating Sean, please? No going to bed quite yet, thank you very much. And then, honestly, the same for Stu B. Cool, that's a bit better. More cargo pods, nice. Being generous to us, how close are they? Yes, that's quite a distance off, and it's more meat that we can't necessarily use yet, so I'm not, not in a massive hurry to go and collect that. We got some close, they haven't even had a chance to haul Let's not worry too much about meat miles away. One thing at a time. Right, so with the two... In fact, we've only got one turret, and even then, the battery's not really charging enough. And our geothermal... Oh, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming all right, so that's not too bad. What we could probably afford to do, given we can't actually cook anything yet, is get someone to turn... Yes, I'm aware. Thank you very much, game. So, yeah, we should probably turn the cook stove off for the time being. It's using power The Oh, hang on. As soon as I do that... DJ starts cooking meals. Roger. Ignore me. He is going up and fetching the meat directly from up here rather than hauling it down first, which isn't ideal, but for the time being, will make do. Yeah, battery's charging a tiny bit. If I go and toggle the power on the turret... Actually, no, let's not toggle the power on the turret. Let's do this properly, which means we want to put in a switch. One thing I should really have thought about is the switches have to be manually toggled by a colonist, so I should have really had this set up so I could have the switch back here. But didn't think about that at the time. So we get a switch down, that'll mean that a wanderer joins. Cool. We can go to non-medical. So, fourth colonist already. Very nice. Bloodlust, jogger, psychically dull. That's not too bad. The bloodlust is... Um, it's not so bad. It, it can be negative in some circumstances, but it, the whole never minds the sight of blood and death can be really handy. And no long-term injuries. Cool. Looking good. Do you come with clothes? No. <laughs> come with an armor vest and nothing else. Well, we will get around to that. But not quite yet. As you can see, that right now there are, there are larger problems, like getting things done. Got plenty of wood, so this is merely a priority thing. <clears throat> Clear my throat. Sorry, guys. It's incredibly hot here today, so I am croaky as anything. It's so dry. I did try. I did turn the fan off for the purposes of recording, and I'm slightly regretting it. <laughs> I 
but still progressing. Okay, that's the second turret up. That's definitely going to be too much drain on our overall power. So that's going to be a pain for the time being. We've also already got the cooler running, which is going to be a big drain on power as well. But that's okay. Geothermal is so close to done. Come on, give me a geothermal. Come on. Yeah. No worrying about lots of solar panels for a little while then. And next up is a more difficult question. I'm tempted by stone cutting. I think, in fact, I'm not even tempted by stone cutting. I'm going for stone cutting. And the reason being, wood walls burn, steel walls burn, stone walls don't. It's kind of important in the long term. And we want to be building most of our base out of the, the stuff that doesn't burn, not surprisingly. And then now we can finally get a stockpile in our fridge, because this is already all set up and running, and this is literally going to be just for foods. Uh, do we want to keep anything else in there? Maybe animal corpses, and medicine doesn't really need it until we start growing herbal meds, which we will do soon, but not quite yet. And then I do also think that this could do with a floor speed people getting in and out of there. Good, good. Looking all right for first couple of days. Low food, no trading capacity. Yeah, trading capacity is definitely the next thing we should be thinking about. So, uh, where's Misk gone? For trading capacity, we're going to need an orbital trade beacon and anywhere half sensible to put this. This is only going to be temporary. So, I actually, I like the idea of having it around the turret on the basis that, in fact, around the turret, but not that close to the turret, on the basis that the turret is probably going to get blown up quite a bit. And if we put it around the turret, that'll be where all the loot ends up. <laughs> so for that, we need a trade beacon. We also need a comms console. And unfortunately, I've not actually left enough room in this building for a comms console. So we're going to have to stick a little extra bit on the side. That's fine. Comms console's not a room that gets used very much. Is there anything we want to put in there with it? Let me think. This early on, maybe not in reality. Maybe just the comms console. Yep. Let's go for just just a comms console, which are, as you can see, not that large, so wooden wall just out and round this thing with a door on the front of it. Simple as that. Bit of a again, temporary setup, but we'll come around and sort all of this stuff out properly a bit later down the line. For now, it's just about making us survive the little bits, the first few, and that is going to help a lot. Do we want it up there or we do want it down here? It's going to be harder to defend up here almost because of where the mountains are. Down here is a bit closer to the sea. I'm almost tempted to put it back here for the time being. Yep, we're going to go with that one first. And then we should really prioritise building it, to be honest. Also don't have a particularly good line for the power conduits, so expand things a little bit and this will solve all of the power problems for the time being and for a little while in fact they are very very handy in that respect like to get the geothermal up nice and quick also we did not set Saski's restrictions or her work schedules so does look like we've now got ourselves the, the big bad miner um, we're going to leave we only need one grower so we'll leave Stu on that and then Ah, this is where proper construction and repair comes in, so Sean can actually drop down to four for that. And then do our researching. We'll give Stu B a bit more to grow. And then is there anything else these guys need for the time being? We're, sort of, we're not doing a lot of these. I suppose I should probably have. I do like to have this on one, just because when I click a switch, I want people to go and do it, not hang around. It's rarely a scenario where you don't want it done immediately. So yeah, the, the tailoring and crafting and so on, that's going to come down the line. It's not too important. What we could do, actually, is have Stu be quite high on the, pro on the hauling, because that, to begin with, is always a bit of a problem, getting enough stuff hauled to be properly efficient. I can't remember how much rainfall it said we got in this area, but I suspect it might be quite a lot. We are also out of metal once again. So, get some more steel mined out of this mountain side here. Oh, there is a little bit left actually, and a little bit more mining queued up, so it's slightly premature, but it doesn't hurt to be ever so slightly ahead of the game either. Stone cutting done already, wow, he's a monster. 
And another drop of cargo pods. Loads and loads of muffalo meat. It's miles away, but yeah, I suspect we want to keep that. Oh, I forgot something with the fridge as well. Stockpile in here is fine, except for the fact that this needs to be quite a high priority. And then let's hide the stockpile so just, just so it looks a bit cooler. As I was saying, we also want a, another growing zone. Two more things we want to get on the go. Firstly, this is going to be for zeri gum, which we turn into herbal meds. And then another one up here, similar sort of size. And here we're going to have cotton so that we can make some clothes. And then I might at some point soon... In fact, given we've got someone who can do growing really well already, I'm going to add another one. This, this is a little bit overkill for this early on. I'm going to put corn in it because corn takes ages to grow. And you've got to remember, we've got quite a short growing period here. So we're going to make use of this sort of up to, I think we had May till August, didn't we? So we've not actually got very much longer in order to get stuff grown and our supplies ready for the winter. So I think this is important. I also think, actually, no, let's let them use the meat. I was going to sort of save the meat for nicer meals, but that's a happiness thing. And we're really not too desperate for happiness stuff at the moment far more important stuff going on. I'd also like people to kind of kind of prioritize the generator if possible. There's no real easy way of prioritizing them to do that if I remember rightly. Like you can right click on it and tell them to prioritize it like this, but they'll only do it for a little bit and they'll go back to what they were doing. Don't have a research project at the moment. Got the stone cutting on the go. Don't really need to make use of it quite yet. Got that quite quickly, quicker than I was expecting. So Pneumatic picks can be really good to speed up the mining speed. Hospital beds are really, really handy. Gun turret cooling is really, really handy. Uh, I think to begin with, oh, and hydroponics is really, really handy for growing, but we, you know, that, that'll enable us to grow all year round, but it has to be indoors, really. It doesn't work very well outside. So I think to begin with, there you go, pneumatic picks, because that will slow, speed most of the game up in the long term. We still have lots of mining to do, so... Would really quite like you to get the geothermal generator up and running as well, guys. I did also forget to set Saski's... Oh, forgot to set Saski's patient and firefighter. Also forgot to set this. And this, yeah, it does seem to be working all right so far, having them set to anything. They don't seem to be sleeping for huge lengths of time. I think they would have been sleeping longer had I not fiddled with it. So that's looking okay. Hopefully we get that generator hooked up pretty soon. Trading capacity is being sorted out. So next up, we probably... In fact, I'm not going to queue anything more up because I don't want them to get distracted. But next up, we're going to be looking at building some prisoner and medical services. Just somewhere where we can stick any prisoners we capture in and proper medical places so that they get access to the meds, etc. Don't have a dumping stockpile at the moment either. Not particularly important early on, but now we do. Real temporary location, but it's just to get rid of some of the stuff that's kicking around indoors, like, uh... Ah! Hall, please. Thank you. We did have the bill on... Yep, butcher creature is on there. You're not limited. Just animal corpse. Cool. Just make sure that gets done eventually. So far, so smooth. And... Looking at the time, also, about that sort of time where I should start thinking about wrapping up the episode. Although, normally when I say something like that, the storyteller is kind enough to come in with an event to end the episode on. Hint, hint. Storyteller, now's the time. Maybe now's not the time. No, leave me alone. Travellers, yes. Travellers, good. <laughs> Don't suddenly send horrible things at me. Cool, so just really our lack of metal that's holding things up now. We do have... We do have Stubby on mining, and he will get around to that as soon as he's done growing. So I will imagine he's going to be getting over and starting that very shortly. Oh no, Stubby's hauling, isn't he? Yes, I forgot about that. We missed it at the end. Stubby has the, the quite high hauling priority, but that's fine as well. That just makes everything more efficient. More sleeping. Let's have a look. How long are they sleeping for? An hour? A couple of hours? What, DJ, what are you doing? Meditating. Oh, okay. Getting some joy, Roger. I forgot about that. Another need they have, although at the moment I think they're not too bad. Feeling bad. No apparent reason. I just feel bad right now. That's not very very helpful, is it? Let's get 
a horseshoe pin down just to give them something to do. And again, the idea is I'm thinking sort of colony layout is a bit. I'm thinking almost prison architecture actually. <laughs> so sort of a very central what would be your your play area in prison architect but in this will be kind of growing come joy come stuff we need to do outside and then everything is in a sort of box around it that we can continually expand outwards as the colony grows uh, yes I only have a little amount of food in storage but that's because the berries have only just finished so DJ is now on full cooking mode that will be fine we will get things on the go never you fear Mining's going okay, how's this doing? Still no steel been put into that. They've built the comms console first, which is just not helpful at all. <laughs> Should also, for the sake of speed, haul some of this stuff that's blocking the area. I know, obviously, hauling stuff takes up time as well, but in the long run it will make things more efficient. And a bit like I started to do in the Alpha 9 season, I'm also going to start like paving in a lot of the outside area where we where we often have people running around, basically. They did build that switch for me. More meditating? Praying, okay. Someone want to go and toggle the power for me. Get that turned off, just, we have the option to, why not? Hopefully we'll see any raids incoming quick enough, because, again, that now has to be toggled by a colonist, rather than, like in the previous one. Ooh, pneumatic picks already done. Researching really quickly, so... Next up, it's between hospital beds and maybe hydroponics. I think potentially hydroponics is going to be more important for us. Hospital beds obviously mean that we can get our guys, if they get injured, anything goes wrong with them, you're better at making them better. You know, they, they have a higher efficiency when they're in a hospital bed. But such a short growing period, food's going to be an issue. I like to grow food rather than hunt. I find hunting really annoying. So, yeah, on that basis, let's get the hydroponics researched. As I said, again, they, they are doing it very, very quickly, which is great for early game. I have to say, I might turn Stuby off researching. It's almost a bit unnecessary now. Make sure he gets around to doing more important stuff. Yeah, I think that is as good a place as any to leave it for the very first episode of this season. So, hope you enjoyed it, guys. Just to wrap up, well, you can see what we did today. Normally, I'd wrap up on what we did in the episode, but it's kind of from what I was used to be doing with a massive base as opposed to a tiny little colony like this. But you get the idea. This is as far as we've got so far. Got the basics set up, looking pretty decent for the time being. Storyteller hasn't come with some horrible, horrible surprise for us quite yet. Do need to get the power sorted, but they are finally getting this done more visitors and that's a good place to finish it up so don't forget guys name for this little town what are we going to call our little place by the sea so i hope you enjoyed this video guys first in the season if you did please hit like please hit share it really helps me in the channel out and otherwise i'll catch you next time Woo.